Welcome to Illuminati Silver. We tell you the truth about silver. Today is Friday the 24th of July 2020 and yesterday we published a video entitled Comex Contracts Rocket as gold reaches for $1900 and silver surpasses $23. And on Tuesday our video podcast was entitled Silver Flies Past $21 Where Next? Clearly the answer was higher. And we produced links to both of these in the description box below, or at least published them in the description box below. Now tomorrow we shall be producing our weekly update, including a brief analysis of what happened this past week, and what influences, and there will be quite a few, we can expect this coming week on precious metal prices. So we thought that today we would produce a shorter video than normal and talk about how the coronavirus pandemic has created opportunities for some businesses, whilst devastating others. This is particularly so as far as home working is concerned and has a profound effect on those even in the financial services community who advise clients, having to adopt different technologies in which to give their advice and recommendations. How is this relevant to us, you ask? Well, it may very well become the norm for the future, even allowing for the ultimate curing of COVID-19 though so many months if not years away, and should be something we should all, frankly, be aware of. We shall therefore look at an article published in this week's Financial Advisor publication entitled Disruption Breeds Innovation, but first we will provide a Wikipedia definition of what is meant by disruption and disruptive innovation. Disruptive Innovation According to Wikipedia in business theory, a disruptive innovation is an innovation that creates a new market and value network and eventually disrupts an existing market and value network, displacing established market leading firms, products and alliances. The term was f defined and first analysed by the American scholar Clayton M. Christensen and his collaborators beginning in 1995 and has been called the most influential business idea of the early 21st century. Not all innovations are disruptive, even if they are revolutionary. For example, the first automobiles in the late 19th century were not a disruptive innovation because early automobiles were expensive luxury items that did not disrupt the market for horse-drawn vehicles. The market for transportation essentially remained intact until the debut of the lower-priced Ford Model T in 1908. The mass-produced automobile was a disruptive innovation because it changed the transportation market, whereas the first 30 years of automobiles did not. Disruptive innovations tend to be produced by outsiders and entrepreneurs in startups rather than existing market-leading companies. The business environment of market leaders does not allow them to pursue disruptive innovations when they first arise because they're not profitable enough at first and because their development can take scarce resources away from sustaining innovations which are needed to compete against current competition. A disruptive process can take longer to develop than by the conventional approach and the risk associated to it is higher than the other more incremental or evolutionary forms of innovations, but once it is deployed in the market, it achieves a much faster penetration and higher degree of impact on the established markets. Financial Advisor magazine dated 23rd of July 2020. Headline, Disruption Breeds Innovation by Wesley LeBau, Manager of the CPR Investment Global Disruptive Opportunities Fund. Quote, if asked to encapsulate the coronavirus crisis in a single word, disruptive might be the most appropriate choice. The outbreak has impacted the life of everybody on earth, changing how we work, exercise, socialise, shop, manage our health, educate our children and take care of our families. Few events in human history can lay claim to such disruptive potential. The question is, how do we respond to such unprecedented disruption? Do we put our lives on hold, wait out the storm and hope to return to normality once the disruption subsides? 
Or do we adapt, innovate and find new ways of tackling the situation at hand? Herein lies the paradox of disruption. In order to conquer disruption, we must be disruptive. In the world of business, disruptive companies are those that are able to innovate and create new markets that challenge existing business models. These qualities are now more important than ever, and a handful of companies and sectors are beginning to show their disruptive mettle by responding to challenges thrown up by the crisis in new, highly creative ways. The first place to look for such disruption is in the digital economy which during the crisis has been shaped by one trend in particular, working from home. Over the course of the pandemic, the UK, for instance, has seen a tenfold increase in the number of people working from home and those companies able to adapt and shape new patterns of consumption are winning out. Zoom is perhaps the most well-known success story. Overnight, Zoom became the go-to video communication platform for millions of new everyday users, including schools and college students, church and concert goers, and families and friends looking to connect while subject to social distancing measures. In its year-to-date share price has doubled as a result. Companies are also doubling down on the use of video communication software compounding growth in this market. Alongside Zoom platforms such as Microsoft Teams, Google Hangouts and Skype and Cisco WebEx seem to be the preferred choice of video conference platform for many companies. Microsoft's Teams platform with multi-application integration has been the standout performer here, gaining more than 12 million daily users in a week, representing a jump of 37.5%. But video communication companies are not the only ones to benefit. The cybersecurity market has grown significantly amid a more rapid migration to digital networks as brought about by WFH, with a cloud's share of security budgets expected to rise from 28% in 2019 to 38% on average in 2020. CrowdStrike is one of the best recent performers, posting a 60% share price rise over a matter of days. The company has taken a fundamentally new approach to cybersecurity that leverages the network effect of crowdsourced data applied to modern security through technologies such as artificial intelligence, cloud computing and graph databases. Alongside WFH is, separate, is the separate but related trend known as PAH, play at home. During lockdown, most of our extra free time is spent consuming digital content. This is captured in recent figures, showing US urban residential downstream data consumption to have increased by 98% in the week to March 16. In this space, we're seeing gaming companies with in-game monetization functionalities, such as Ubisoft and CD Projekt, as well as subscription-based music and TV platforms doing particularly well. But work and play are not the only things being practiced remotely. Coronavirus has heightened the need for remote healthcare and telemedicine, which are being used to help measure diagnostic indicators, such as someone's temperature, heart rate and blood pressure while in isolation. This disruption to the provision of ordinary healthcare has led to sector-wide innovation. In China, the outbreak has caused citizens to flock to online platforms such as Good Doctor, Beides Inc. Weinisheng and Alibaba Health Information Technology. Not sure I pronounced Weinisheng correctly. The Good Doctor platform, for instance, saw weekly downloads jump by 1,186% in the week to January 26. Additionally, the push to develop a vaccine is seen to be spurring disruption. The new collaboration between Pfizer and Biotech, for instance, brings together one of the largest and most established players in the pharmaceutical sector with a younger company working at the forefront of mRNA-based immune therapies. One final area where we are seeing disruption is in supply chains. Manufacturers from the automotive, aerospace, home appliance, textile and alcohol industries are among those reshaping supply chains 
to help counter the global shortages of key medical supplies. Ford is using parts usually fitted in vehicles such as fans and batteries to produce modified respirators and ventilators. Dyson, on the other hand, is working alongside the Technology Partnership, a group of British scientists and engineers whose purpose is to drive innovation to develop a new ventilator system altogether called Covent. These are just some of the innovations being driven by disruptive companies in order to tackle the challenges of a COVID-19 world. Now we must look ahead, understand how the crisis will continue to shape our lives for years to come and equip ourselves with the tools and ideas needed to manage these changes. In short, to overcome the disruption, we must be disruptive. End of article. Well, we hope you found this brief interlude from the norm useful. And we can say without any doubt that as these technologies improve and home systems become even more the norm than they are now, this will potentially have a huge influence on our city centres, our centres of commerce and even transportation as more and more of us work from home rather than travel to the office each day. What do you think? Do share your thoughts and please look out for our weekly update which will be published tomorrow. Thank you so much for listening and if you haven't already done so, please subscribe to our channel and press the bell sign so that you're notified of our videos as and when they are published. Not forgetting that we update our Richard and Greg channel every few days and this past week we have placed two videos on that channel too and once again if you have time please pop across to that and take a look. We hope you have found this video interesting and informative and if so please give it a thumbs up and share it on social media. Please ensure that you have subscribed to our channel and press the bell sign so that you are notified of any future videos. Also kindly visit our website at IlluminatiSilver.com and if you haven't already done so, please subscribe either as a free or paying member for regular email updates and offers. Disclaimer. Illuminati Silver owners come from a background of banking, international wealth management and economics. Having now retired from these worlds, we are not qualified to give investment advice. Therefore, this and other productions must not be deemed to be giving such advice and merely represent the personal views of its owners. Music.